Um, okay. Stuff that didn't go well. The Rob Cooper era at Penn State, Penn State baseball. Um, Steve, should we just accept that Penn State baseball is never going to be a above average team? Or, or is that the, is that a bad way to look at it when you put it in the perspective of the big 10 and other teams there in the big 10? I think this hire and the commitment that comes after it will be interesting to see what happens. I, mean, I don't know whether you're just rearranging the ships, rearranging the ships, rearranging the seats in the Titanic or not. And I, I, Titanic is harsh and that's, it's, that's, they're not that bad. Um, but they're just not, Penn state has not invested in the program. Coop was one of the lowest paid, if not the lowest paid baseball coach in the conference, you know, they're, they're, it's just the weather, all those other things, the facility, the indoor stuff. Now, if they're going to try to say, hey, we're going to do this new indoor facility that everybody's going to use except football because football is going to have its own existing facility. And we're going to do this and we're going to make a commitment. I guess those things are kind of interesting is like, well, then why would you kill can the coach, right? Like give them the, give, give the current guy to get the tools and resources they need. Um, but it's been a decade, so maybe they're just going to but if they don't have those tools, the next person doesn't have those tools. And I just, I, I don't know what they think is going to differ. Like, I mean, it, it's great that they have Fart City Baseball and it's wonderful. But, and I guess I've mentioned it on here before, like the, the biggest accomplishment I've seen as a Penn State sports fan in any sports was the 1999 baseball team's run to the Super Regional. And I'd be shocked if I see that happen in the next 10 years again. You know, they're just not, that's not what happens here, even though Pennsylvania has good baseball and all those kind of things. I was just about to say that, that, to- that is the most fascinating part of all of this. Pencil, there is very few sports that PA, probably football being one and baseball, very closely number two. Um, certainly at the youth level, I think baseball is more passionate, more more of a bigger deal at the youth level in PA than any other sport. You look at the numbers, I think PA is one of the top three to five states in terms of MLB draft or MLB players ever. Um so it's not like there's not a hotbed for it. And I don't know, I, as, as much as I see, as much as I hear the weather argument see and, and, and see that argument all made all the time, you look at Michigan, which is, you know, exactly. 10 degrees colder north. You look at Maryland, relatively in the same climate, two programs that are making the tournament year in and year out, essentially competing for maybe not necessarily national titles with SEC and ACC type schools, but at least they're making a, a dent, so to speak, in the national impact. So I, I don't buy that argument. Um, so yeah, I, I I do agree with you. The this higher this next step for Penn State baseball is going to be very fascinating. Where will they go next? What will they do next? Um, I would. Personally, like, yes, I think I would like to see Penn State, I don't necessarily want to say invest, but develop a, a, a base, not, a, not even as a baseball school, but just develop a little bit more in baseball and be relatively competitive. I think for me personally, like I've college world series is one of my favorite sporting events of the year. Um, but I feel like in general, college baseball has gotten bigger as the internet has kind of grown and it's easier to get access to your team. Um, I don't know. I, I, I probably could say this about any sport at Penn state, but go, go all in, like keep, go, keep pushing. Like there are holes to be filled. The lady lions program is down. Like go fill that, be the ba- be baseball and go fill it there. Go do this. Like, it's not like, and the other thing is, it's not like there's not fan support. Like they had a lot now, some of us dollar dog night, but they had a lot of people at baseball games this year. There was a lot of social like clout around it on, on the internet this, this season. Um, people were paying attention. People are passionate about Penn state. We've said this time and time again, people will care. You just got to give them just a little bit of a reason to care. And I'm hoping that that's, that's what I want them to do. Yeah. And I, th- I think that's possible. I, I just, I don't know that it wasn't possible with the same coach, right? So that's inter- interesting to me, right? Like if you're going to invest, if you're going to tweak some stuff, if you're going to find a way to to market and they don't have to draw thousands of fans. And if they draw 950 or a thousand fans a game average, they'd probably be thrilled and they'd probably be in the top 25 in attendance, you know? Um, and I think college baseball in general has ebbed and flowed during my lifetime. Like when ESPN first found it and you were he- hearing the, the ping of, a, of a, aluminum backs, and it was like, oh, look, what is this, 
right? And there's Pete in Cavillia, like at Texas or wherever the heck he was playing in college or wherever he played in college. Right? I'm like, oh, wow, look at this. We're hitting dingers. We're, it's fun. It's different. It's it's just different than MLB. It's great. And then it kind of ebbed off because there was less less of it on TV. And now with all the ways that people can stream and get their teams. I think it can be more than it is. I don't know. I don't have a sense of what the investment is to make that upside consistent where they're going to be top half of the Big Ten. Like, I just, I don't, I don't know. And I don't know what's appealing about the job. If you're second in command at like a top 25 program, is this appealing at all to you, right? Like you're going to start on the yeah. road for, forever with your team at the start of the season. The facilities aren't super, it's cold. I mean, they're not bad, but they're not, you know, and, and that's the other wild card. Like if the state college spikes were to become more than what they are, like, because there's not there's not a short season baseball league anymore. There's the MLB draft league, right? And then there's you no know, single A full season. If they were to make an effort to become more and try to go to full season, I don't know how much that what what challenges that presents facilities wise, right? In addition to whatever. So never really there's thought lots about of moving that. parts. Yeah, I never really thought about that being an issue. Um I just don't think they're thrilled with anecdotally just why like I think the MLB draft league isn't good for them. Like, I mean, they get people, but it's kind of like the premier lacrosse league. Like, I think you have to have a connection. I think fans have to have a rooting interest, not like here's some prospects on a team together. I want the state college team and know they're going to go to the next step to whoever it is. Excuse me. You You are talking to a partial season ticket holder of the Frederick Keys. So I know. I I, I, I get what you're saying. If the guy, if you knew one of your guys was going to X or Y team next. I, I a hundred percent like and you can tell that even here in frederick uh, the attendance apparently had dropped between when when the keys were an a affiliate of the orioles and to to the to the draft league it's interesting about the draft league like i haven't heard that or or thought even about that but it does make sense you know i i this, how much of that I have to read the contract or whatever, but how much of that relates to the fact that like who owns Medler Field? Penn State does Penn State own Medler Field or it like I think they own it. We own it and they rent it to the, from us. But I don't think the the rental deal was ever. Penn State's not great at negotiating that kind of stuff. Really, like for like for whatever reason, like I think they get people who are too big of sports fans and don't protect their their own backside or their own really? interests, hmm. and contracts become kind of one sided. Of course, then we go the other way, right? And we try to, we, Penn State, which I try not to be a wee with, but when the university goes the other way and tries to like monetize stuff, then they look, you know, you can tell them squeezing every dime, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's, so it's it's understandably tough to find a middle, but I think for the baseball one, that that was not perhaps the most university friendly agreement. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, like I said, I think I would like, I just want a better baseball program. I don't necessarily want the best baseball program. I just want a better baseball and, program. But Coop, and Coop was a good guy, right? Did, good did guy. stuff well. Great like, guy. I mean, there were ebbs and flows where I heard stuff about baseball players, but I think a good guy in general. Um, I think to his credit, I think he knew it was coming. I think when the new AD was named last year, they were, he and his family were planning for the potentiality that this could happen. So I think they weren't, you know, blindsided and, by it, which is great. So, it, And maybe that's a Pat Kraft being in the, the ACC and uh, you know, obviously Boston mm-hmm. college doesn't have a, a huge baseball team, but let's go play the other, you know, they have to go play Clemson or, or Duke or North Carolina, some of the bigger schools in the, in the country when it comes to that sport. Maybe, I, maybe I, it looks like low hanging fruit from a different perspective. I was just going to say, you know? it, it, it might just be an easy win. It, it might just be an easy win to, to kind of put your own stamp. Make, not that Pat Kraft hasn't done a lot already both good and bad um a low-hanging fruit an easy win maybe i guess right. would be a, a, a good good way to say that 